The book of Revelation. The book of Revelation has Christians screaming up in arms. The end of the world is coming. The end of the world is coming now. Repent. Fear the Antichrist. Fear the mark of the beast. All while handing out crazy as batshit pamphlets that claim that Carl Jung, Charles Darwin are in the same categories as Hitler. Bahui! Grab your Christian crosses out, scream repent, while we're here on a spiritual level of being. We're going to be using logic and reason, and let's discuss the book of Revelation and its history, and let's decode it. Prepare for true gnosis. The book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was the last canonically accepted text, not accepted as canon until the late 4th century. However, it was rejected by many Eastern churches, viewing it with suspicion right until the late 14th century. It was possibly written around 96 to 98 AD, or even as late as 110 AD, or as early as 80 AD. Many ancient churches also rejected it as Gnostic in origin, or even unknown in origins. Now, many church fathers also supported it as canon. So, let's delve into this text. Now, the author of the book of Revelation could either be John the Apostle, or an unknown author named John, claiming to be John the Apostle, or even Serinthius, a first century Gnostic Christian who was extremely popular throughout the first century. Now, here's where things get interesting. There was a great deal of effort done by early church fathers to deny that Serinthius was the author of the book of Revelation. Now, Serinthius was of the first century, so pay attention now. St. Irenaeus of the second century, an early church father and bishop, writes that, the Apostle John wrote the book of Revelation as a direct challenge to Serinthius' teachings and the two were rivals. The 14th Bishop and 14th Pope of Alexandria of the 3rd century, Dionysus, so this is two centuries afterwards, so he claimed that it was impossible for Serinthius to have written the book of Revelation. So these accounts, one is over 100 years or slightly under 100 years, while the other one is two, 300 years later after Serinthius' death. So let's continue. So who was this Serinthius? Most of what we know about him was written by his opponents out to discredit him. Now, this was all written after his death as well. So it's untrustworthy. So he was most likely born around 50 AD and dying around 100 AD, though we're not exactly sure. However, this fits the timeline of the authorship of the book of Revelation. However, he's not only credited to have been the author of the book of Revelation, he's also credited to have written the Gospel of John and also the secret book of James and the Gospel of Serinthius. Now, it's most likely that he was a follower and supporter of John and wrote the book of Revelation as John most likely died during its authorship. And it's possible that he even continued the book or even continued the writing of the Gospel of John. Now, it's also likely that he wrote it in memory of John, being either a student of John or a student of someone who learned from John. Okay, so now we're going to be reading some of Revelation 19, 20 to 21, and I'm going to be using the translation that I translated. So let's go read this. It won't be much different, but this way I can point out some of the mistakes they made and also the symbolic meanings. And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet, who performed the signs before him in which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image, both were cast alive into the lake of fire that burns in the middle of the sun, and the others they expanded, or killed, with a big broadsword, of the one sitting on a horse, or the horse, having gone forth out of the mouth of him, and all of the birds, rather I used vultures, or it could even be nymph, or even predator, were satisfied with the flesh of him. So, ornia, which they used for bird, which also means eagle, nymph, and vulture. All right, so burning in the middle of the sun, this means Helios, the Greek god of sight, the shining one, the one above. This is symbolic for Christ, the light bringer, the morning star, who is also symbolized by a horse. Now, Helios's symbol is a horse, ripened fruit is also a globe. Horses are also feminine and masculine. Christ being represented by a white horse, also the Antichrist. Christ is also represented as a horseman and Calvary. So let's continue. So the Christians go on about the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. What does the mark mean in Greek? Well, it means a place, a rank, order, target, and also a mark. Beast in Greek means a beast. Monstrous beast, a naughty child, poisonous animal, a brute, and even a worm. So this is symbolic, meaning a high rank, high order. 
is usurping the Christian movement, being a poisonous animal. So being the serpent, the deceiver, deceiving the Christians. This also means that the rank and order of Christianity is becoming corrupted. So corrupted by the Roman church, who later became the Catholics and Orthodox. Let's continue. So we'll read it back down below. So after being killed, a big broadsword sitting on a horse, having gone forth out of the mouth of him and all the vultures were satisfied with the flesh of him. But being nymph, this means like a siren. So a seductive deity, basically, or demigod that drowns people after seducing men. So this means Christ has left the words of these people, the vision of them. So they're killing in the name of Christ, the false Christ. So they're unable to understand the teachings of Christ, unable to understand what they're doing. So they live in ignorance, in blindness. So the evil that they're doing in the name of their God. So these are empty words that they're doing. These are false actions. They're not bearing good fruit. They only bear rotten fruit. They have nothing good to offer. Now, with living by the flesh of this world, this is also the worldly desires. So serving a false Christ, a false God to serve their worldly desires. This is what it means here when it says satisfied with the flesh of him. So these people here, they're doing acts of carnage, acts of lust, acts of violence. So this is exactly the opposite of what Jesus was teaching. So they're unable to understand the Christ. They don't find Christ within them, let alone the spirit within. They do the opposite. So let's continue. I'm going to read Revelation 22, 14. Happy are those who wash their robes clean and so have the right to eat the fruit from the tree of life and to go through the gates into the city. But outside the city are the perverts and those who practice magic, the immoral and the murderers, those who worship idols and those who are liars, both in words and deeds. So this here, this is the... Roman soldiers who were becoming Christian, joining in the mystery schools that were a mixture of Christianity and Apollo worship and Mithra worship. And in turn, they're following their emperor's orders to persecute these Christians, the real Christians, the Gnostics. This also means that the ones who worship these idols are the ones in charge. Constantine, the emperor of Rome, was also known for going into these secret churches, these mixed in of Mithra and Apollo and Christian worship. So within the ranks of the Romans. So this becoming a new state religion. But the story of Christians persecuting other Christians. This also got mixed in with the story of Paul, who in turn was also mixed in with the story of Marcion and Simon Magus. And the Apostle John story being mixed in with Serinthius. All of this is done in order to remove the esoteric teachings of Christianity, to remove its gnosis. So the corruption of the church, a hijacking of the church from the Romans. Let's go read Revelation 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, holding in his hand the key of the abyss and a heavy chain. He sees the dragon, that an ancient serpent that is the devil, or Satan, and chained him up for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the abyss, locked it and sealed it, so that he could not deceive the nations any more until the thousand years were over. Now, this dragon, this is Yahweh, whose servant is Satan. Yahweh being Yahweh the serpent dragon god, the liar and deceiver of nations. So the nation rulers were also called archons in Greek. So deceiving the world rulers in the name of their god. So they're killing in the name of a false Christ that they created and in the name of a false god that they worship. Okay, so let's go read Revelation 20.4. Then I saw thrones and those who sat on them were given the power to judge. I also saw the souls of those who had been executed because they had proclaimed the truth that Jesus revealed and the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image, nor had they received the mark of the beast. So this meaning they had not worshipped the false image of God. They did not kill in the name of Christ or in the name of this false God. Now, this also means that the ones being executed were the Gnostics being killed by the false Christians and by the Roman church who usurped the higher ranks of Christianity. Okay, so let's go read Revelation 22.16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to announce these things to you in the churches. I am descendant from the family of David. I am the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. Everyone who hears this must also say, come. Come, whoever is thirsty, accept the water of life as a gift, whoever wants it. So the morning star being Jesus, being the light bringer, the morning star, which is also a term of Lucifer, Lucifer challenging God, Jesus challenging Yahweh, the false God. Now, the soul being the spirit, 
being Christ, the bride, being Sophia, the Holy Spirit, having the Holy Spirit pour upon you, finding the spirit within, discovering the Christ within, the rebirth of self. Now, this also means connecting into a one, mind and soul, the masculine and feminine nature of Christ and the masculine and feminine nature of God. It has many different symbolic meanings. The Greeks, when being married, they would share bread. So this is also symbolic for connecting into a one. It's also symbolic for divine knowledge, spiritual knowledge, the bread, bread being gnosis. Okay, so next is Revelation 8. Let's go explain it as well. When the Lamb broke open the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Well, one, yeah, seven chakras, obvious. But let's continue into something deeper. The word anarchy, which means lamb. This also means child, lamb, goat, to care and protect. Purification. So these purification symbols, purifying through atonement. So through suffering, one is reborn as seals means items, holy relics, an award. So your award is the rebirth, to find the child within, to find God within, to find the Christ within you. So finding and discovering the spirit within is like discovering Christ. So these are the symbolic meanings of the book of Revelation. So the whole talk about apocalypse, no, it's an end of an era, an end of an old life and beginning something new, being reborn again. Thank you so much for joining me on this discussion. I hope you have a lovely day and a lovely night. Connect to one mind and soul. Namaste.